Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 21st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we have a guest diary by Logan Fluke and Logan writes about how to use prefetch files in forensics investigations. Great article for those who are not yet that familiar with some of uh, the details of Windows forensics. Prefetch files are meant to serve as a cache file for the operating system, but the real value for forensics is that it tells you what uh, software was actually run and it can even tell you for example some of the files that uh, this software may have opened so if you want to start with windows forensics uh, that's the write-up kind of to introduce you to some of the tools that also help you analyze these prefetch files Microsoft this week released an update to Windows 10 that isn't exactly a security update, but I think still worth mentioning. The update Microsoft released fixes an issue with TLS connections failing. And apparently this is something that uh, was introduced with the October uh, patches. It looks like some versions of Windows 11 are affected as well. By this point, there is only a fix for Windows. Windows 10. If you have the issue and if uh, this fix doesn't uh, help or you're running Windows 11, then your only other option is to undo the October patch. And if you're using Microsoft 365's cloud offering, well, um, auditing your configuration can be a little bit uh, tedious. So to help, uh, CISA now released a tool in the form of PowerShell scripts that will verify if a configuration complies with the SCUBA minimum viable security configuration baseline. The tool was released uh, to a GitHub, it's called Scuba Gear, kind of based on that acronym uh, Scuba, which actually stands for Secure Cloud Business Applications. Scuba is a set of baseline configurations developed for the US federal government, but of course others may find them helpful as well. And uh, with that, uh, you may also want to take a look at this uh, tool to help you audit against these uh, baselines. And Portsbigger has an interesting blog post uh, outlining an attack that they're calling a connection contamination. The root cause is a combination kind of of browser and proxy features. Let's say your browser is connecting to two different websites that happen to resolve to the same IP address and that use the same TLS certificate. Now, you may say, well, when would that ever happen? But actually that happens quite commonly, for example, with load balancers, even some CDNs. Uh, for example, if you're connecting to Cloudflare, uh, then you have one IP address and usually a TLS certificate that covers uh, many different uh, host names or you know, with wildcard certificates, of course, you certainly have it. But essentially what's happening in this case is that the browser will only set up one TCP connection and then send requests to both websites using that same TCP connection. And then of course, if you are connecting uh, to a proxy or load balancer as such, then it's up to that load balancer to send uh, those requests uh, to the right backend. And that's sort of where the second uh, feature comes in, a little shortcut that some of these load balancers take in order uh, to uh, route these requests. And uh, this is called first request routing. So the load balancer just looks at the first request and then routes all the requests coming from that particular client over that connection to the same backend. And that's sort of where things can get confused and where you end up sending requests requests to the wrong backend, which then basically could, for example, merge a vulnerable and a non-vulnerable backend and be used to inject things like cross-site scripting. 
Now, port speakers state that uh, this particular configuration isn't all that common these days and true, uh, don't think uh, Cloudflare, for example, does it, but uh, that this will be more of an issue with HTTP3 when we are running all of this over UDP and even things like IP address and such uh, can change. So Port Speaker recommends verifying that first request routing isn't used in any proxies that you have deployed. So requests are routed separately and properly. And then of course you should also verify things like host headers on your backend server, making sure that you're not processing any requests that aren't meant for that backend server. Remember in these load balancer proxy scenarios, TLS doesn't necessarily help you there because TLS is terminated on the proxy. Well, and uh, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.